Onichiwa Sumo Card fans, welcome to edition number 8 of Sumo Card Hub. Appreciate everybody tuning in the previous episodes. Thanks for all the suggestions, ways to improve, comments. Uh, extremely valuable as we uh, continue to improve this product week to week. So again, appreciate all, all that. Hit subscribe if you like what you see and, and certainly leave comments below. I read each and every one of them, so, so appreciate all that. Got an exciting episode today, uh, broken up into three segments. We'll talk about the top 10 Yahoo Japan auctions that closed, and really, again, not, not just the most expensive ones, but what I consider the most interesting ones. So we'll walk through that. Got some exciting ones this week, not dominated by BBM like we have in the past. Then we'll go into uh, debut cards. I'll, I'll highlight a little bit about what debut cards are, and then I'll show you a few examples uh, of what those are for, uh, for certain Sekitori, certain Rikishi as well. And then uh, you all have convinced me to open a few packs. Uh, I've got an exciting uh, episode there or segment there. Gonna bust open a few 2004 packs of BBM. And for those that are, of you who are tracking, that is um, Hakuho's debut set, right? So he uh, his Jiryo debut card or Deka card um, uh, was in that set. And so we're gonna be chasing a few Hakuho debut cards. So exciting there. Uh, most of you know I do not like to open boxes and packs. Uh, I like to collect the sealed ones. Odd, uh, but there are people out there that do that, like me. And so busting open any packs uh, it makes me cringe a little bit, but uh, but certainly we're doing it in the uh, the spirit of debut cards and uh, chasing a few Hakuho cards. So without further ado, let's uh, let's transition over into the top ten. Okay, this first top ten auction is from 1989, beginning of 1989. These are telephone cards, or, or tere cards, as the Japanese call them, um, short for telephone cards. This this three card set highlights Chiyo no Fuji, the great Yokozuna, and this highlights his winning of uh, his 26th Yusho. You can see that on the left there, him holding the, the Yusho trophy. It also highlights uh, his 53 consecutive victories. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he was on a, a consecutive victory streak that began on the seventh day of the 1988 uh, Natsu Basho, and that concluded his last victory was in the 1988 Kyushu tournament on the 14th day. He actually lost on the last day, um, uh, giving him 53 victories. So uh, this set highlights uh, those achievements you can see here again 26 victories here's his 53rd victory i'm assuming you can't quite tell but uh but the card here highlights that and then it has his doryo iri uh, card here on the right so in japan you use these telephone cards uh, at payphones you would buy these telephone cards insert the card into the payphone and it would give you so much time depending on where you were making your phone call to um, so they're pretty interesting, high, very highly collectible. Certainly in the early early 90s, late 80s, these were all the rage. Everybody was collecting telephone cards, and so certainly they were capitalizing on each and every subject that, that would sell. Here is it pretty interesting on the envelope piece. It highlights uh, his 53 victories in each and every um, uh, Sekitori that he had beaten, uh, and, and highlights that here. I can't quite read all that on the left, but probably talks a little bit about uh, Chiyo no Fuji, where he's from, uh, and his, his basically his 26 victories. So sold about 18, uh, well did sell for 1800 yen, so let's say about 16 or so US dollars. Uh, one bidder, so not a lot of action on this, um, but uh, but certainly whoever picked that up got a great deal. You don't typically find these for, uh, for less than 10 US dollars per card, so great deal whoever picked that one up. And so I, I actually have a few more than 10 auctions this week, but I was going to run through uh, five separate postcards of, of Rikishi from the 1913-1914 the time frame. So you definitely heard me right there. We're talking over 100 years old on these postcards. Uh, again, not, not highly collectible, but, but people do buy these. Um, they're certainly a piece of history, and I'd love to get start getting into postcards and collecting a little bit more, but I um, only have so much time and bandwidth to uh, to do that. But anyway, here's here's Hakozan uh, Maigashira during this time, about 1913-1914. Just a great p 
picture of Hakozan and, and on the postcard you can see there. So postcards were very popular in the 19, um, 19-teens, if you will, up until the 1920s. So right around the World War I time frame, uh, postcards were printed, especially in Japan, quite a bit. So the, uh, the wrestlers were captured, at least the popular wrestlers at the time were captured on postcards. Not difficult to find them. Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, but certainly the subjects are very interesting here. Hakozan. This one is a, a great one. The next auction closed again at um, at uh, 2,000 or so yen, so about 18 US dollars. That's, you don't see this very often, certainly not on a postcard. They're more more posed, if you will. But here you have the great Hitachiyama, Yokozuna Hitachiyama, holding the baby, which is just a great image here. Uh, very interesting, very unique. And so uh, just a great pickup, whoever got that one. Um, love it. So here's the back of that postcard. You can see very similar to the previous one. Uh, Shoseido, I believe, is the company. Uh, I don't know if that was a... I'm, I'm assuming that's the that's the actual company name. Haven't quite researched that, but um, attributed to, uh, to Shoseido. So again, the great Hitachiyama. So next one, Aioi. Uh, couldn't find a lot of information about him. Uh, certainly don't believe he's got very many cards, so this uh, this this postcard could actually be his debut card very well. So you can see Shoseido there, another great postcard. Again, a little over 2,000 uh, yen, 18 or so US dollars. Another one, 2,000 or so yen, about 18 US dollars, just one bid. Um, this is a what is it, Tamateyama? So he was a Maegashira at the time in the, the 1914s. A little different background. This is looks like a, whatever s trademark that is. It looks like it's in Kanda, Tokyo. Uh, but don't recognize that trademark or who, uh, who that's attributed to. But just a great historical postcard of uh, Tamateyama. And then this last one here. Uh, oh, Maegashira Ohibiki, Ohibiki, so very similar to the one before. You can see uh, the trademark here, and again, these all sold for just a little over 2,000 yen, so about 18 US dollars. Just wanted to highlight those; those are fun collectibles. Uh, certainly, historical pieces at really not a not a very high price at all. So again, if anybody picked those up, great pickups. Certainly worthy of of the top 10 this week. All those. Okay, this one should be familiar to a lot of folks. This is the uh, 2016 masterpiece Hakuho Superstar card. Um, great looking card. What makes it more interesting though, if you look on the back here, these are numbered out of 200. So this one is 163 out of 200. Got 2,900 yen, so I'm making a guess here around what, 27 US dollars, 26 US dollars. Um, 12 bids, so a lot of action on this one. And, and as Hakuho has announced his retirement, so uh, these are going to be harder and harder to pick up. Certainly very, very limited with only 200 copies there. So imagine somebody from the Facebook BBM Sumo Card Collectors group pick that up. If you did, chime in, let me know you got it. I uh, would love to see some uh, some additional scans of it if you, if you can. So great pickup on that Hakuho card. This next one's fun. This is from 1922. These are the R-Series uh, Menko. So these are the die-cut figure Menko. Um, this one's uh, produced by Maru Maruya. You can see a little bit here in the upper left-hand corner. Here's the Maruya um, trademark. And at the top it says Kodomo Menko. And so I've been able to catalog this one. I actually have an uncut sheet as well. Super great price here, 45. Uh, a little over 4,500 yen, so let's say about um, what 40 40 US dollars or so. Five bids, so a lot of a uh, lot of action on this one. I'll scroll through some of the pictures here. You can see it says Kodomo Menko, Kids Menko. Um, each one of these, unless it's written on their Keisho Mawashi, it's very difficult to tell. Uh, so not every Menko is identified. But you can see again having an uncut sheet super rare in fact i haven't 
ever seen any of these popped out. I've only seen uncut sheets of these. This is about, I, I own one, uh, certainly here, here's one in this auction, and there's, there's likely one or two more floating around there. I feel like I've seen them. So, uh, but, I'm, but they've always been in uncut form, never uncut. So I can imagine, you know, being here a little, a uh, little less than a hundred years old, the, uh, the ones that are popped out are probably already long gone or destroyed. Just highlight some of the great images. And again, I just, I love this artwork. I love the printing. You can see the registration is off on a few, but that just to me makes it a little more unique. Just a, a little more um, personal, if you will. And so, can't quite read all that, but uh, but does say 1922 there, or at least the Japanese year conversion uh, in that to 1922. Here's the back, and you can see how it is die cut there. Let me let me scroll in just a little bit, but you can see how it's perforated, and, and the idea was you'd buy these sheets, uh, and then you would pop each one of these out to play the game. So again, whoever picked that up, great price, 45. 4,500 yen, five bids. We're gonna now get into the some uh, Legend Heroes autograph cards. These have been extremely popular over the last month or so as they've hit the streets. Uh, this one, certainly uh, part of that, that group. So this is uh, the 63rd Yokozuna Asahi Fuji. You don't see many of these. Uh, you, you know, he, he competed and was a Yokozuna at the same time as Chiyo no Fuji. So really in Chiyo no Fuji's shadow. Didn't compete for very long. I think about uh, eight or so tournaments as Yokozuna, uh, and really only got four Yusho uh, through all of that. But but you know when you're competing with Chiyono Fuji, you know one of the great Yokozuna of all time, difficult to rack up the Yusho. So so he held his own. Certainly again, certainly not as as popular as Chiyono Fuji, but um, but a Yokozuna nonetheless. This this auction closed at seven thousand yen, so what is about sixty six U S dollars one bid. Uh, but interesting numbering here. This is 85 out of 85, so this is the bookend. Uh, and I've seen in the past these bookend cards um, command a little bit of a premium over the other ones. You know, the number one of 85 or 85 of 85 in this instance, or if a number, you know, is a jersey number or anything like that on other sports, those typically command a little bit of a premium. So uh, certainly a unique one here. Um, and so whoever picked this one up got a great deal at 7,000 yen. So. In my mind, just a, a great deal of a, of a important Yokozuna in the 1980s. Likewise, we've got another Yokozuna, Kisa no Sato, recently retired Yokozuna. These these autos have been going for pretty high and pretty strong prices. Here, 15,000 uh, yen. So what is that? About 140 U.S. dollars or so, I'll guess. One bid, but uh, but just a great auto, great image of Kisa no Sato. And I was looking back, and I didn't realize he did not compete for very long, just a few years at Yokozuna, but I was only able to compete in two complete tournaments during that time. So so he certainly was at the tail end of his career when he hit Yokozuna status and the Yokozuna rank. But, but again, Yokozuna nonetheless, and uh, just a great pickup uh, by whoever got that one. I wanted to point out, you can see here, the BBM authentic seal. And so certainly when you're buying any of these cards, make sure you're looking for that seal. So great pickup, whoever got that one. This is his 2020 Sheen card. Uh, great autograph. I, I love the images of these. I, I love the background. I love the wave, Mount Fuji. So just all around great looking card. And you talked, or I talked about bookends before. This one, another bookend. This is number one of 90. So likely commanding a little bit of a premium. And you can see here that probably reflected in that price, 20,500 yen. Uh, so let's just say 190 U.S. dollars, four bids, uh, but but in my mind, just a, a great looking card. Um, just love it. I love the image. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of these cards. So whoever picked that one up got a great deal in my mind. Now let's go on to the top auction of the week. We have a 132 card set of the 2002 BBM uh, regular issue set. Look at the price over here, holy crap, 45,000 yen. So I'm, I'll just guess and say that's about what, 400 US dollars or so. 27 bids on this. Don't get quite the full set. In fact, I think I misquoted, there's 132 cards in this set. I think this auction has just 123, 
But this is the beginning of the dead era, as you've heard me mention before. BBM was not producing a lot of these cards. Uh, a lot of the great Yokozuna from the 90s uh, had retired by this time. We, you know, you really only had um, Musashi Maru and, and Takano Hana left, and the, they would soon retire not long after this set. So popularity was dwindling down. BBM was not cranking out these sets. So difficult to find, not surprised by the price. I'll scroll through some of the auctions pictures here might be difficult to see let me see if I can zoom in just a little but uh, overall all these cards look to be in great condition and certainly not gonna find um, these coming up for auction very much anymore unopened boxes are unheard of at this point uh, just the scrolling through some of the subsets the Shin Judo cards over here on the left you got um, some of your Sancho Prize winners uh, here. Don't don't quite know each of the inserts. I know some of the the, the, the bigger experts uh, on the BBM Sumo Card Collectors Group on Facebook chime in. Let me know what subsets you see in there. If I'm missing any of the special cards, this one does have a pretty unique card um, inserted in random packs. It's a, it's a double Yukata card, and that card is of Tochi Azuma and Chio Taikai, two, two great Ozeki during that time. And it's really interesting, so they put pieces of actual Yukata in the card uh, and then randomly inserted that into the packs. It also has individual Yukata cards of those of those two Rikishi. Uh, Tochi Azuma has one and then Chio Taikai has an individual one as well. Those relic cards or Yukata cards are extremely hard to find. So anytime those pop up, there you're going to see a huge Huge rush, a lot of bids, uh, and a lot of demand on those cards. So again, whoever picked that up, not surprised at the price at all. Great pickup, and congratulations. Just chime in if uh, if anybody watching this actually picked that auction up. Um, would love to love to talk a little bit more about it. All right, thanks for tuning in for the top ten this week, and we'll switch over and we'll uh, we'll we'll highlight some debut cards. I wanted to highlight what we call Deka in the world of sumo card collecting, or, the, or it's short for debut card, or in Japanese they call debut kado. And in the world of sumo, the word rookie really doesn't apply here. Uh, you know, in the world of sumo, wrestlers, when they first enter sumo, they, they compete in their first tournament in the Mai Zumo uh, ranking, and then once they pass that, then they actually get officially listed on the ranking sheet, and that makes them a full-fledged rikishi in the world of sumo. And these, these lower ranked rikishi often sleep, eat, train together with the high ranking rikishi. And so they, they are full fledged rikishi at that time. Um, and they compete on tournament day, they compete on the same ring or dohyo as the high ranking um, sumo wrestlers. So, so the, again, the word rookie doesn't really apply. I mean, they are rookies from very early on age. But once they rise up in ranks um, to the sekitori or paid status, then, then oftentimes they'll get cards made of them, and that's what you see in front of me. Again, we call these deka. Um, it's short for debut card, uh, or in Japanese, debut kado. And you see four, really five here, de deka of, of famous wrestlers throughout uh, the history of sumo. On the right, you saw me highlight last week, we've got uh, deka of Hakuho, his two from the 2004 set and stay tuned i'm going to do some pack openings trying to chase a few of those you see takamiyama the great takamiyama who really brought the popularity of sports overseas um and so that is his 1971 set you see the the great uh, wakanohana from the 1950s and i'll highlight that here and uh, you'll see here in just a second akebono's deka here in this trump set so let's go ahead and get started again you saw me last week highlight Deka for Hakuho. This this right here has got to be the holy grail of modern sumo card collecting. This is card number 65. This is Hakuho's Deka. And you can see just, um, you know, he's will be ranked up there as one of the greats, if not the great by, uh, by many minds. So this is again from the 2004 regular set. They had a subset, the, the Shin Judo set, and uh, so he also got a card in here, again, Deka. So you can see card number 88. So so these two cards, just the 
the cards to have in the modern era of sumo card collecting. So those are of the great Hakuho. Get those there. Takamiyama, most everybody familiar with Takamiyama. This is his Deka from the 1971 Kabaya 3D set. This was a multi-sport set. There was numerous sumo wrestlers in here, a lot of baseball players, but this is a lenticular card, and I don't know how well you can see the, the 3D image of that here. But from 1971, the first card of, of the famous Takamiyama, blank-backed. These are really extremely hard to find. See Takamiyama, so this is his Deka. From the 1950s, this is my bread and butter Menko. So from 1951, this is from the 1951 Kagome Rikishi 5 set of the great Wakanohana. This is him ranked at Komosubi. You can see the Kagome trademark right there. You can see Komosubi rank at the top. You can see the Gu Chokipa or Rock Scissors Paper hand there. You can see the, the five digit fighting number at the bottom. But the very first card made of the great Wakanohana. So take a look at him. He is, he is the reason uh, Sumo gained such popularity in the 1950s, right after the war. He, he really helped bring Sumo to, uh, to new popularity heights um, and, and really a much needed boost for, for the sport coming out of um, World War II and out of the occupation. Here is the 1990-1 Trump set. And this has Akebono's Deka. It's a, it's a Trump card. So it got, has the great Chun no Fuji on the top, but if we sort through and get two, Three of Clubs. That is the very first card made of Akebono when he was just a baby Judio. So that's his Deka. You can see the standard back on this Trump set. But um, yeah, the Three of Card, Three of Clubs, Deka is the card to have of Akebono. So again, just wanted to highlight. Deka, what debut cards are, why they're important in the world of sumo card collecting. And so, appreciate everybody tuning in. And we'll uh, we'll switch over to do a pack opening of 2002, 2004 packs chasing some Hakuho Deka. In the previous segment, you, you heard me talk about Deka. And uh, specifically, these two Deka of Hakuho. Um, again, these two cards are the cards to have in the modern modern sumo card collecting world. And uh, what I have here are two unopened packs of 2004 BBM sumo cards. There are five cards per pack. I don't know if you can see that there. Unopened, 99 cards in the set. So let's see if I do the quick math right, about one in nine chance of landing one of these Deka of Hakuho. So crossing fingers, these packs are not cheap. Picked these up a while ago, but um, certainly certainly willing to open them up for the channel here. And uh, again, let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in and wish me luck. I'm gonna cut the tops off, so I don't cut any Cards. All right, chasing some Deka. Come on, Hakuho. All right, got the famous Kotomitsuki. Super famous during that time. Let's see, take a look at the back. Who's that? Daizen, looks like his uh, retirement. Takami Sakari. Card number 93. And then Tochi Azuma, famous Ozeki during this time. You can see the back there, 
card number two. So good at the time and still is a good pull. All right. So no luck there. All right. Certainly fun to open these packs from 17 years ago, trying to land. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. <laughs> a Shin Judo of Kaito. Oh, so close. I thought I had it. I thought I had it. Takanohana's retirement. You saw in the previous episode of Top 10, uh, the 2002, and I mentioned Takanohana retired soon after that. And well, there you go. He did. Here's his haircutting ceremony card. Card number 71. Here we go. Takami Sakari. Card number 92. Boom. Man, look at that. Love to have an Asa Shoryu card. Card number one. Man, this is a great pull. Man, I love that card. Look at that. If I can't get a Hakuho, the next card I'd want is Asa Shoryu. For those of you who didn't have a chance to see him, he was just, a, he was amazing. Um, similar to Hakuho, but I'd say a lot more aggressive. Um, and just uh, just an all-around great, great uh, Seiki Tori, and I believe he would have he would have gone really far had he um, had he had a lot more time in the Sumo Association. All right, looks like what do we got? I don't think it's going to be it. another Shin Judo card of Dai Man Dai. Let's see, hold on, Dai Man Azura. Not familiar with him, but card number eighty-seven. So you can see here a typical image where they will be pointing to the Bonzuke where they first debut on the Bonzuke. So this is likely, I'll have to go back and check, but likely Dai, Dai Mon Azura, and that's his uh, Deka right here. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Highlight of the pack has got to be this Asa Shoryu card. Not bad, not bad at all. Thanks, everybody. And we'll tune in next week for episode number nine.